As way of introduction, equipment compliance deals with any of the equipment, hardware, or products that you may make that go into the market. There's going to be various standards, specifications, guidelines, and even end user requirements that are placed on that equipment when you design it and when it needs to go to market. Today in this presentation, we'll provide you with more information on how to comply with these standards and what developing requirements are coming out and how you can rapidly, easily, and effectively meet those requirements. Hello, I'm Steve Barsick Amstel with High Tech Design Safety. We're a third party evaluation firm, test facility, FCC, EMC, and EMI lab, and we provide a full suite of testing, certification, and development for your products to clear things like UL listing, CE marking, FCC, and other requirements. Myself, I have been in the industry for over 30 years and in product safety for 24 years. My broad range of experience everywhere from semiconductor manufacturing equipment to medical equipment and oil and gas equipment and even into toys and other consumer products will provide you a range of experience that will help accelerate your product to market in an easy, effective and rapid manner. The background context for our company is providing practical and thorough solutions to get your product to market rapidly, easily, and at the most cost-effective rate. From here, I will talk about conformity and how to achieve it for your product. As a way of outline, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the standards and applications and the baseline of where we are today and then the new standards and changes coming online, including changes to the recent restriction on hazardous substances used in your equipment. And then thirdly, and this is going to be most important, I believe, for you, is strategies on how to achieve compliance and conformity and get your product to market. That's what we all want, right? So part one is objectives. You need to understand, and I can help with this, or you may already have a deep understanding of the base standards and requirements for your product and how that can impact your current business. And then from there we'll begin to implement a plan for resolving and getting your product to conform and through test. Requirements that we initially are going to talk about uh, came from the customers and from the insurance companies and internal specs and then also from government regulations, for example CE marking and US electrical codes. Those were developed to improve safety of equipment and provide safety for workers and the public. And when your equipment goes into the market, we want to be sure that it meets those codes. Additionally, there's other special interest groups, um, insurance companies, um, jurisdictional people, meaning the building code people and the city councils and things like that. And these are expressed through things like the National Fire Protection Association, factory mutual, underwriters laboratory, and for example in Europe, the directives and standards that apply to your equipment. So here in the US, our baseline regional requirements deal with the National Fire Protection Association. Now when you hear about fire protection, you probably think mainly about sprinklers and fire extinguishers and things like that. However, their main interest in this space is electrical equipment. Um, early on, electrical equipment caught fire a lot and caused a lot of loss and damage in the public sector and in industry. So this group came out with standards for the safe design, implementation, test and certification of that equipment. Then along came OSHA, the Federal Government Occupational Safety and Health Administration. And then when you want to talk about lasers and x-rays and radiation, also from the Federal Government, the Center for Diseases and Radiological Health. And then along that time also came building codes to make buildings safer and how the equipment goes in there. And then even further, fire codes. So if your equipment is using things like uh, isopropyl alcohol, which is flammable, or you're pumping around gasoline, or other things that are flammable materials. And then even the fire codes extend to how your equipment is installed, the electrical equipment that goes along with that, and all those codes related there. So each of these different standards has a scope and what we help you do is figure out which of these codes apply and which of the hazards cause these standards to come into effect and then we're able to document and test to that. 
And additionally, there's efforts in place to harmonize all these U.S. standards with the European standards, which I'll talk about next. Over in Europe, the baseline requirement is CE marking. So it has a very broad scope. Pretty much any machinery or consumer product you want to put on the market into Europe will require CE marking. So everything from toys to medical equipment to large-scale industrial equipment requires CE marking. Even, for example, if you're going to modify a truck to use for oil and gas exploration or um, transportation, logging, or anything else like that, all those products are going to require CE marking. The scope of CE marking includes a low voltage directive. So any of your typical industrial equipment that uses electrical power will fall under the low voltage directive. Additionally, equipment that has moving parts will fall under another directive called the machinery directive. And it deals with the safety of moving parts and preventing those from you know, causing damage to the environment, to your equipment, and your employees, and the general public. And then there's other hazard-based directives and standards, including, as I mentioned earlier, in the U.S. requirements, laser safety, radiation, and things like that. Now, also in Europe and the U.S., there's another range of standards that deal with radio frequency emissions and noise that your equipment will emit into the air or back onto the conductors in the equipment. And in case of complex equipment, that noise and energy may radiate to other pieces of equipment. So FCC in the US and EMC, EMI testing and directives in the European Union are applicable as well. And just as a quick aside, we have a lab here in Austin, Texas and a larger lab in Albuquerque, New Mexico to handle, handle those requirements. But I'll del delve deeper into our capabilities towards the end of the presentation. Now, when we talk about applicability of these standards, they're ramping up. More and more equipment falls under these standards every year. And at this point, all manufacturing equipment and all consumer products fall under one or more of these standards. So what you need for your acceleration to market would be a way to detail and pick which specific standards to comply to, which testing you need, and then develop a clean, fast, and effective testing plan to get you there. Level of effort on these kinds of programs, depending on where you are and the complexity of your equipment, could be anywhere from a few days to a few months for CE marking. Also, if you're shipping equipment to, um, let's say, uh, Japan, China, and other Asian countries, you'll have to uh, probably initially conform with CE and then conform with other harmonized standards in those countries as well. So in conclusion, USA, Europe, and pretty much the whole entire world has standards that your equipment must comply to, and then even further, things you must do to prove that compliance. And what we want to do is look to where we can find the most feasible, easy path for your equipment to comply globally to these standards and help you design your equipment that way. So now let's look at new regulations. What's coming on board for the restriction on hazardous substances is they're ramping that up. That now applies to a subset of industrial equipment and all consumer equipment and all electronic equipment. We're at the point now where Europe will not allow lead, cadmium, and other um, hazardous materials, hazardous substances, to be imported within their equipment or even to be built in the European Union with those types of materials in them. Now, when we talk about new regulations in China, they're aggressively pursuing their own mark, the CCC mark, and that's ramping up as well. Um, they're kind of a quasi-CE scheme, but they also have their own requirements as well. Then if you want to go to um, other countries like Russia and Australia and other places, each of them have their own requirements, and many of them are harmonized pretty closely with CE, but we're able to help you get the other little details accomplished so you don't run into a problem where you've shipped maybe a thousand or five thousand units 
to Australia and they're stuck in customs or like a you've shipped something and you're trying to get it into Russia and you haven't done the background work to actually import it. Sometimes those products can be, this is tough to say, but they will be impounded and destroyed if they're not properly marked. That will really slow down your, um, your market launch and your approach and, and can be a real problem. So let us get with you early on that. So further discussion on restriction on hazardous substances, mainly for electrical equipment, it's no lead in the solders and no lead on the devices that are being soldered into the equipment, no mercury and other materials, cadmium and things like that. Now if we can do a full bill of materials and look at what's going on with your equipment, then you'll understand clearly whether you have these materials in there or not. And if you're uncertain about particular parts, two paths for there. You can either eliminate that part or you can test that part as it comes in. So eliminate, I mean, you know, take it out of the design if you can or replace it with a part that does have certification on not containing these materials. In the future, what's also going to come into impact is what you do to dispose of the product at the end of the lifetime. That's still coming on board, but the reason these, are, these um, standards are in place is to keep lead, cadmium, mercury, and other heavy metals and other hazardous substances out of the environment. Here's our part three objectives. Let's develop strategies for conformance for your company. You're developing products having a conformance strategy along with a sales, marketing, engineering, and design strategy will help you get your product to market more rapidly and more effectively. So let's look at causing a positive regulatory environment for your equipment within the company and people understanding clearly what needs to be done to get there. And then follow up on any standards developments or changes that you need to implement. So the couple things we really need to comprehend when we're talking about conformity and certification, whether it's a UL listing or a CE mark or another mark, is cost, time, and complexity. So let's just deal with cost and time because complexity is going to vary with your equipment. If your equipment's very complex, you already know that you're going to have some complexity there. So the estimated compliance costs. So if you have a very simple piece of consumer product, that is um, not special in any way, you can consider that for CE marking, it's going to be in the three to $5,000 range and take anywhere from a couple of weeks to about a month if the equipment is already conforming. If we come back and find some things that you have not comprehended or have changed since your design came along, it'll take a few more weeks for a design iteration and us to retest. A more complex piece of equipment, say let's say a piece of medical equipment that you want to send to the European Union, it's more on the order of $20,000 in four to six weeks. That includes the whole suite of standards and everything else. Now these prices do change, so check the date on this presentation and call us to get an exact quote on what you're building and shipping. Now on the US side, for UL listing and other things like that, those prices, you're going to probably have to add about five to six, maybe $10,000, depending on the complexity of your equipment. So there we're talking, let's say a consumer product, UL listed, we're going to talk in the twelve, fourteen, sixteen thousand dollars $16,000 range in eight to 10 weeks. Um, if it's a very complex piece of industrial equipment, we're going to help you figure a path forward that may not include UL listing, may include field labeling or other paths forward for that type of equipment. But if you really insist on it, we're thinking in the forty dollars to $50,000 range in the four to five month timeline. And if you have a piece of medical equipment, you can see those numbers would be about the same, you know, maybe forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000, maybe up to sixty dollars in four to six months. So then once we're through that, our team will also help you provide labeling, markings, nameplates, for the equipment and then also all the documentation from the standards that you need to include in your manuals because without that information you won't be able to get marked or listed so we help you do all of that and then any revisions you do in the future we'll also help you through those as well so the next actions is to implement a conformity and regulatory plan within your company understanding exactly what your equipment needs to get there and then add the baseline standards and any customer requirements to it as well. And then 
let's go ahead and minimize the testing standards and scopes so you get exactly what you need and you don't get scope creep from the testing facilities. That's something we see sometimes. So from there, what we do is we review the end user's requirements and the standards. We identify the availability of your current conformity documentation and do a design review so we can see that there are any changes need to be made to your equipment. We'll develop those changes with you and then we'll go and look at any checklist that you need to do as far as manufacturing or design purposes. We'll do a review and then if it needs to, um, implementation of any safety devices, EMO, interlocks, and things like that on your equipment. Now conformity can be a barrier to markets and it can slow your company down. On the flip side of that, conformity when properly managed can be a competitive advantage and accelerate yourself into market. So let's look at doing that for you and in the past you know, it was difficult. We've got a system that'll get you there fast and easy. Let's use that. So in summary, we have a dedicated team of design, engineering, manufacturing, sales, and conformity people to support you and get you to market acceptance rapidly and easily. The next steps forward for this process would be to contact myself or my team at hightechdesignsafety dot com or hts2.com and let's talk about how we can get your equipment to market fast, easy, and effective. Thank you so much.